Rasan Bahati, new Bugatti. Welcome to another edition of Fear of the Fro podcast. It's been a minute, but I'm back. Been moving around a lot. Jobs keeping me busy. Methods to winning is keeping me busy. The Bahati Foundation is keeping me busy. Family's keeping me busy. Damn it, I'm busy. Anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I have a special guest today. Actually, someone I've known for a long time. Um, so I ain't gonna call him too special. Some of you younger generations, he just came, uh, he been around for a long time because y'all look up to him more than y'all look up to me. But that's all right. We all in the same game. Same family, same organization, same company. And my special guest is Sharon Smith. What up, what up, what up? You know what time it is. Oh, he look, he doing video time already. Podcast time. No hate, no hate, brother. <laughs> Just keep the love flowing. It's podcast time. You might have to um, like copyright that. We got we got Ken in the background. He like our special um, our manager. He making sure we say the right things over the airwaves. Hey Ken, can he copyright uh, you know what time it is? It's podcast time. You hear that? I'm gonna try to snack it, snap it. Uh, what, what, no, what's the word? Snag it. Yeah. I'm, I'm drinking a uh, honey jack right now, so God bless me. That clear. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little dark. It's a little dark. But uh, got Sharon here. He's got the headset on, and uh, what we want to do today, uh, we've been sitting down and just kind of talking about a lot of the things we've covered through the year, uh, actually over the last two and a half years. Where Justin Williams, who's a partner in um, Methods to Winning, Sharon and myself, we had a lot of common things, you know. We had a lot of things that were in common uh, outside of just racing bikes and being black and being fast and being winners. Yes, I gave myself a compliment. Um, like, but we, on a serious note, we wanted to change the makeup of the sport, at least in our immediate community, and then see where it grows. And so... Sharon came on board, been a master's racer, dominating SoCal and other parts of the country uh, upwards of, what, 10 years now? How long? Yeah. Ten, I, this month, 15 here I'm going into. I'm, Woo! I'm getting, I'm getting up, it's been long in the tooth, they say. long in the tooth. He still needs a bike fit. Any bike fitters out there? Come on, man. He needs a bike fit. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, if y'all don't know the story, Sharon stole from me, and that's how he got into the sport of cycling. But, you know, we here now. We here now. Um, anyway, we formed a company called Methods to Winning. And I think I can give the credit to Justin. No, I no? think Elijah created that name. No, I don't give Elijah no damn. I, I hate to say Come it, on, but I, I think Elijah Shabazz came up nah, with that. his mama named him Baker. I'm going to call him Elijah Baker. That's true. That's true. All right, so we... We, we might have to uh, give um, Elijah some credit. Anyway, Methods to Winning um, is a company we formed about two and a half years ago. And the slogan we came up with is, doesn't matter if the Peloton is two or 200, the secret method to finishing first. So it's just saying, like, I think Justin Williams said it best. It's like, it don't matter if you're a climber or a sprinter or an all-around rider, at the end of the day, if you want to win, eventually you're going to have to go fast. So that's one of the things we hang our hat on is teaching people the art of sprinting, something I've perfected over the over 20 years of racing. Uh, Saran definitely has perfected over 15 years of racing. I'll probably I'll give him about eight years. Yeah, eight years. Don't, yeah, don't he, he didn't perfect too it too, too soon. And then Justin, who's absolutely tearing up the whole United States right now, Every, everywhere he go, he just blaze a trail with, with victories and cash and checks and whatnot. So this podcast is all about methods to winning, how we started, and where we are now. So our very first event we held at a local uh, bike shop in Carson. And maybe, Sharon, you could tell me how you felt about that event um. or, or why we even did it. Was it at the Green Door or yes. the bike shop? Not the Green Door. Okay. Yeah, I thought the event was great. It was our first. We I want to say we just jumped in the water. We took a chance. We didn't know what the outcome was going to be, how the support was going to be. Um, we just went in it, and we as winners, we thought that, okay, this is something that 
that may possibly work if we come together and put our brains together and our energy together and push forward. And, and lo and behold, we had a great turnout for our first event. Um, I want to say we had 80 riders show up. Mm -hmm. um, we rode to PV. Um, everyone had a great time. We went back to the coffee shop. We shared some stories. We gave away some trinkets and some gift go goodie bags to the people who came out and supported. And here we are, what, two years later, two and a half years later, we're still we're still rolling. So I have to say, and, and I didn't look at it until I think Ken brought it up. It was like, or maybe someone brought it up to Ken and he brought it to our attention. It was like every event we've done, for the most part, has been a home run. And, and that's not being cocky or anything. It's just that, you know, we've been learning, too, from our first event to Circle of Doom that was just, you know, a month ago. We, we've reached our potential or our goal, I should say, for the event and, and some. Like the Green Door, 80 people, you know, yes, granted, we were giving things away for free, but it still, I think, spoke to um, people want to know from us. They want to learn from us. They want to be around us. Um, and I think part of the reason is we do the right things. I, I absolutely agree. I, I really think what we're trying to do and, and what it's about is just bringing people together, bringing community together. It don't matter your skin color, um, what level of racing or riding you do. We just want to see more growth, more people on bikes, more smiles, and just keep things going in a positive light. And so that's why we're doing the clinics. We're trying to do the fun rides. Um, we're trying to, like we did a clinic in Carson, um, was that a crick clinic, I believe? Yeah, yeah. And we taught on turning, coming out of turns, somewhat how to read a race some. And so there's just been several things that we have just tried to do. Um, and so far, we got a lot of positive feedback, and the support is showing in numbers. Each year, we have been growing. So yeah, yeah. Um, I think it speaks volumes that, you know, you just got to go out there and try and, and see where it goes and keep your head above water. Um, we try to partner with the right companies. We did some work with Swift. Um, where did we do that at? Um, that was at, uh, I think it was the, the it was a World Cup. Oh, at, yes, at yes. At the Velodrome. Correct. And, and Zwift was doing a activation where they are basically get on the bike, see how fast you can go, and you win something. And that was actually a small partnership that turned out really big because Zwift is one of the biggest fitness platforms out there now and you know at this point in Zwift they were only around for two years you know so Zwift was very new startup and they obviously took notice in us and wanted to do a small partnership which like I said turned out being uh really big so that was a that was a good event and uh, we got a lot of a uh, lot of love um and then we moved on oh you talked about the clinic but what about when we we hit up the track? We went to the local uh, the local track, correct, and uh, sponsored uh, one of the Lava series um, and offered cash to all the categories. I don't know if you remember that. It was like after a long day on the bike, we went there with cash in our pocket. I was announcing, and you guys had a bunch of money. Yes, yes, we we're giving away money to t various races. Um, I think Lagrange was the host of the event. Probably, yeah, they're active in the in the lava community. So we somewhat partner with them and and donated cash. I mean, we don't always try to give away cash, but in this instance, you know, we had some cash to give, and we was letting it, we we're making it rain on the people. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that was a great event, and. We just kept pushing from there. For after the track, I think we went and did a, um, I want to say a women's night. At oh, yeah, that was huge. Yes. Uh, we called it a, a night for women cyclists. So we sat down, and we were pretty much trying to figure out, like, what demographic is underserved, you know? Um, and maybe marginalized is not the correct word to use, but, you know, like, women cycling need more participants. So I we wanted to focus on the women. Uh, in our area and here we go again another sellout event that we had at the Raleigh bicycle store in Santa Monica um, we got a wine vendor to come in and support it we got um, what what was that grocery store that can't gave the uh, sushi uh, Bristol Farms Bristol Farms yes. Bristol Farms donated the food I mean it was it was it was a great night and um, I don't know what was one of the highlights of the night for you I think um, having Kendall Ryan come in 
and and speak with the women. I thought that yeah. was huge. Um, Briona. Briona, uh, the Dutch girl that yeah, was visiting. She's, yeah, she's racing in Europe still right now. Um, and we had another. Was those the only two women we had? Yeah, you know? it was the two. But we also had uh, one of the founders of Zwift stop oh, by. Yeah. Kate yes. from Zwift stop by. We had uh, Daryl Harperin, who was a, a supporter sponsor at the time. Yes. He's an attorney. He stopped by. Um, the saddle guy. What's your guy? Oh yeah, John Luca yeah. from uh, Alabisi. Yeah. Um, they carry the S and P saddles, which is the saddle that I use. Uh, but it was huge having Kendall there because. If you paid attention to women's cycling this year, she had a standout, probably a breakout year. Yeah, she won a stage at the Tour of California. Like that was right? huge. That she was in yellow. Yes, you her know? and her sister. Her and her sister. <laughs> Same time. I mean, that's like you don't you don't get that too often, um, especially in your backyard. I believe she won a stage that was very close to where she grew up in Ventura. So, just to like see that they were part of our event, and then they went on to do really good things just months after. It really made us feel good. 100% agree. And then we did a ride, I think this left out of Manhattan Beach. Bruce uh, Beach. Bruce Beach. Clo close to Manhattan Beach. I, I don't know if it's quite Manhattan Beach. It could be El Segundo, but Bruce Beach is very significant. If you don't know about Bruce Beach, I'm not going to tell you about it right now. I want you to do your own research. Uh, look up Bruce Beach on, is that Highland? Bruce Beach on Highland. And I think it's El Segundo. Or it could be Manhattan Beach. Whatever. Do some research. Once again, I mean, if you look at this photo I just put up, I mean, this is not everyone. And yeah. this was just a, a nice ride that went from Bruce Beach into PV, very casual, a loop around the golf course and back. Ken don't want to talk, but we're going to put Ken on the mic real quick because he's the creator of the movement ride, and maybe he could talk about why he created it. I'm nervous. Oh, man, I'm scared. So the movement ride was created, and I'll give you a very short uh, story. It was an opportunity to bring the fast guys who come up through various clubs and moved on and give them an opportunity to come back and give back to some of us slower folks and bring us all together for a ride where we could just be together on the bike, uh, have community, talk, and not have to worry about getting dropped. And the first ride that we did, as Rasan said, from Bruce Beach around PV was a total hit. Um, and it's kind of uh, indicated to us that from time to time, people want to get together on the bike and just be able to pedal together and talk. This guy, very diplomatic. <laughs> Not charismatic at all. But yeah, honestly, great idea. And... The movement ride has actually taken off and became its own thing um, so much that, I mean, there's no way around saying it. There's people that wouldn't have the audacity to visit some of the places that we're taking them on the movement ride. For instance, the Watts Towers. Uh, for instance, coming into the heart of Lamert Park or, or riding down Vermont in the middle of the day. And I remember after one movement ride, people were saying, man, I couldn't believe how friendly people were in the hood, you know. Uh, yeah, there's some freely people in the hood, and everybody's not out to get us. So it was. I think the movement ride has served a really good purpose to uh, opens people, pop their bubble. You know yes, what I mean? Take yes. them out of their their comfort zone. You know what I mean? And let them live what we live every day. You know, I live in Lamert Park. It's it's the hood, but it's not quite the hood. You know, so I have to go through hoods to get to my house. You know. And then right above me is really nice neighborhood. So I get a little bit of everything where I live. And, and I'm fortunate that the movement ride has actually seen where I live now. You know, they they know what I have to go through to, to go train four hours. You know, it's not just hopping on a bike path and then I'm on the PCH. It's a little bit of traffic and some lights and whatnot. So. And that's probably why you're a great crit racer. Right. Moving and dodging yeah. up and out of the. That's you what know, they said. You, light you, the light. <laughs> Growing up in Compton, light the light running from the gangsters, man. And that's one of the good things about our company, I believe, is that, you know, we bring an element that is probably missing. And it's a, and we're connecting people together. Like, we connect with some people from Palos Verdes, yep. with Santa Monica, yep. from different areas that we wasn't raised in or necessarily hang out in all the time. So um, that's one of the good things about, if I could touch on the, the Bahati Foundation Christmas tree giveaway and bike giveaway. Yeah, that's coming you know, up December 8th. Yes, yes, sir. So you can get... You can participate in that. It's not too late. We got a ride coming up soon. Um, so be on the lookout for that. But we're going to keep it pushing. 
keep it pushing. And so we're basically trying to go through a timeline of some of the things we remember that stands out. I mean, we've done a lot of things in the community, uh, in our immediate community, in the cycling community. Um, as you know, a few friends of mine and myself started doing this ride that we named Circle of Doom, which is uh, we, we used to leave from uh, the Trader Joe's in South Pasadena, do the Montrose ride short, and on the way back, go up Azusa Canyon, up the hill, up to Crystal Lake, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, the ride had been going on for about four years. It was organized but unorganized. Uh, people would chip in for gas. We had um, uh, Carol. What's Carol's first name? Carol. Master uh, Master Dude. Oh, Pat Carol. Pat? No, not Pat Carroll. Little dude. I forget his name. Oh, Mike Mike Carroll. Mike, Mike, Mike Carroll oh, yeah, and his yeah. wife and his son used to come out and, and sag it for us, and we would give them um, – some change, you know, to, to help out with some of the uh, food they were buying and some gas money and whatnot. And then on our very last event, we said, you know what? This is a good event, man. People are showing out in numbers, you know, three, 400 people. So Saran, Ken, and I sat down. And we said, let's turn it to a real event. And there it was. And Rasan do not want to give me credit. He, to this day, he says I was not at the original ride. You but there, at the original there ride. are some people who said I was there. Steven Salazar, and, I need you to hey, chime in. There's, Buckley, there's I need some, you to chime in. There's some people who, oh, Buckley told me. He said, Sharon, you, God diggity, you were there. You, you, you were there. there. I and Rasan, remember, oh, I said, man, I know Todd. He want to keep I'll me out the, the loop, man. So Todd, Todd got my back. When we see Todd. We're going to get Todd to Todd eat for real it. healthy, so he probably have a good memory. He is asleep right now, yeah, too. He definitely he in a, asleep. In, in what a time deep is it? Sleep. 7.40? Oh, yeah, he's asleep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he is asleep. He definitely out. He was out an hour ago. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we sold out. I think our mark was 150 people, and we charged $45, and we sold out, and that was a huge accomplishment. Um, I believe everyone who did the ride had something positive to say about it. Um, I believe... Everyone who helped put the ride on has something positive to say about it. And I tell you what, the MVPs of the Circle of Doom are the SAG stops. Yes. Uh, the, the volunteers make Circle of Doom. We do all the, the heavy lifting for months to make sure everything is in place for the riders to show up. But without the volunteers, the, the ride would be a bust because every rider I've talked to that I've, that I've run into after Circle of Doom have all had the same sediments like – I had a great time. Oh, and the sack stops. Yeah. The bacon, the potatoes, they were so nice. The music. The, yeah. uh, you never ran out of water. I mean, that's huge, you know, and uh, we looked to build on that. We were fortunate. I'm skipping to this year. We were fortunate to get a title sponsor in Monster, which stepped up and helps us uh, subsidize some of the costs and bring some of the things like timing chips and canopies and uh, beer after the ride and food and uh, better insurance, the whole nine yards. So definitely grateful there. I don't know if you have uh, any fond memories of the first Circle of Doom. Uh, off the top of my head, man, we've been how many? We're like two or three years in. Two years, two years in. So we have done so much that I can't remember. Well, besides, I mean, Larissa Connors. I remember she came out and she smashed the ride. She won everything. And she won everything. She won and, every trophy. And she was so far ahead, she went up Dawson Saddle just for extra credit. So that was, like, pretty impressive to me, one of the things. Um, Rudy was smashing the ride, too. There's just there's so many stories about the ride and just people who don't ride in that area because we don't go to that area that often, and a lot of cyclists don't. So I think that's what makes our ride unique and challenging and, and just amazing just because yeah. of the, the terrain. Yeah, I agree. And to be honest with you, it's not extremely technical. Yeah, like I, I say, as long as you have the 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 will to climb and to do the ride, you're gonna complete it. Yes. There's no crazy, uh, like switchback descents. There's no hairpins, you know, that could catch you off guard. Yes. For the most part, it's just one big circle, and it's fairly safe. Um, CHP has been pretty gracious to us, you know, giving us some warnings here and there, and kind of letting us have our event and have fun. So. Kudos to uh, to CHP out there in the Zeus Canyon, just allowing us to uh, take over the roads uh, for one day in October. And we're I'm also proud that our event, you know, we're not just out trying to pocket money or make money off the public. We have been able to give back to the Bahati Foundation. Yeah. Um, we have, this year we donated money to the the insect family. 
who lost their dad this year. Um, and so we, you know, we put a lot of money back into the event. So, and it's shown by the, if you came to the event, you will see where the money's going. And if you haven't came, you're going to get an opportunity to come in 2019. We already have the date set for it. I believe it's October 19th. If I'm not, yeah, I am correct. Yep, it's October o- yes, October 19th. I like that you paying attention because hey, you're, bro- you're not usually that engaged. Brother, come, let's not talk about paying attention, <laughs> brother. We're going to stay on task. <laughs> but nah, but so set your calendars. The date is set. Um, we're going to blow it out the water again. Um, and yeah, so we're going to keep it pushing as we move along this timeline at of things we have accomplished over this period of the company. So I don't know if this is right or not, but I think it is. Willie is one of our Academy writers. Willie's what, 22, 21? Something like that. Wow, Willie. Wow, Willie. I think he got our very first podium as a Methods to Winning race team. He did. He did. At CBR. CBR. On the, uh, on the Carson side. Yeah, and, and Willie was like one of the late additions to the U25 team. And he came out swinging. He came out He said, out I'm going to milk this opportunity. <laughs> he said, I'm going to get everything I can get right now while I can get it. These brothers think this they team. I'm going to show them we still got it. <laughs> <A> little skinny <laughs> white kid. Yeah. Yeah, so he um, he finished uh, second, I believe, in, his, in our very first season as Methods to Winning. Uh, that was huge. Uh, yeah. You know, the CBR series – is a is a bike a bike race series that's been going on in California for I mean, for years, yeah. long, 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 long time. I mean, I remember Suzanne Sonier mom used to run CBR races yeah. before Chris Lotz, and now it's taken over by another organization with Jeff Prince and his wife. So, you know, uh, race has been around for a long time. It's kind of redundant. I wish we had more events, but it's 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 a local. Uh, it's a local event that everyone can get to very easily. It's wide open, four corner. And I believe the very next weekend, Chevron with Techron got on the podium. Oh, I was I was there for that race. Were you? Yeah, I was there. He oh, hit yeah. out early. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, uh, David, uh, David Santos. David Santos, the fixie sensation. He snuck away, and he never came back and raced again with us. He's right. he like, I'm getting this, and I'm getting out. Y'all ain't going to get no do-over. So we we coming for you, Santos. You better not come back for 2019, man. Yeah, Santos uh, was in a break. I chased him down. Uh, another break went, and he counted the break, and he stayed off the front, I think, for the last three Yeah, laps. but Santos is a good guy. This is, He's one of those guys you don't you mind. You don't mind losing, losing to. Yeah, I yeah. agree, 100%. He was, he was all, he's also a good road racer, even though he's been focusing on, uh, fixie on fixies. He's a really good road racer. And, uh, yeah, like you said, not not bad guy to lose to. Uh, as you can see in the photo, Sharon's is happy. I don't know what. I've never been so happy to get second in my life. I don't know how a guy is so Hey, happy. brother, it's for the camera. You got to know how to do it for the camera. This guy is so excited. Um, well, I mean, we honestly, we got a lot of race results, man. Um, the following weekend, we went to Roger Milliken, which yes. is a, a race that's dear to my heart. Roger was – he treated me like a son. He was the first person to take me out of the state. I went to Kenosha, Wisconsin. Uh, his son was my main competition, and he took me anyway. What was um, his Chad son? Chad Milliken. Chad Milliken. I, I met Chad at, at Eldo when I first yep. started doing Eldo. And uh, he took me to Kenosha, and like I say, I, my, my parents couldn't make it, so he treated me like a son, even though he knew that I had to race his son probably in the finals for the sprints. Um, and honestly – that trip to Kenosha, Wisconsin, is what got me hooked in cycling, and um, yeah. So they this race used to be the St. Valentine's Day massacre yes. for all you old heads out there. And then once Roger Milliken passed, because he was a part of Lightning Velo, or no Canyon Velo, sorry Canyon Velo, which puts on the race, they uh, appropriately named um, the race after him. So Sharon, clean. Did you win? Yeah, you won, right? You got second. We won one two, did we? We won one two. That's right, because I was leading Sharon out in a break, and I was in a break with some people that shouldn't belong in the break. I'm just go ahead and keep their name out of my mouth. But yeah, we got in the break. I was driving the break. Sharon's a proven closer, so it was no big deal. Even though I'm not a closer, as somebody would say, <laughs> I haven't. I, I don't close the deal. But yeah, it was uh maybe two three weeks into the season, and boom. Two, 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 uh, two raisins in the milk is on the podium as one, two. So definitely a good, good weekend of racing there out in Brea, California. Yeah. 
And then, lo and behold, Bahati sneaks on the podium in a pro race. Yeah. I don't know how I did that. I think I was smarter than more than anything. Yeah, Ty, with two strong men. Two strong dudes. That's Tyler, and I forget the other. I want to say Ethan or. He's a Dan- Is he a South African? He may be New Zealand. Frank always getting these foreigners, yeah. man. I, w- I wonder what Frank giving these kids man. to come over here and race for SoCal Cycling. Right. Frank, <laughs> let us know what you giving them, man. We have to step it up a little bit. And uh, maybe we can get some of them foreigners to come join our team for the summer. Yeah, but and like uh, Sharon said, two really good guys, Tyler and the and the foreigner. Um, I got in a break with them, and I remember being like, oh, my goodness, these guys going to attack <laughs> me, and they never did. God bless they so, because it was over after I had to sprint. That's right. We need to give them a methods to winning coupon for something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to start handing out coupons when right. you mess in, up. In the break, we like, yeah. here, here, here you go. 25% <laughs> off Circle of Doom 2019. <laughs> so if you don't know, we didn't really touch on it that much, but we part of the reason for starting uh, methods to winning was to give back to the younger generation. And um, I think from Justin to Sharon and myself, we all agree that by the time you're not a junior anymore, so by the time you hit 18 and you're no longer in the junior ranks, there's a gap there where you're unsupported. And if you're not a standout cyclist as a junior, you don't get the opportunity, right? You don't get the opportunity Correct. to go on and do bigger things. So we started the academy team. Yes, we did. Um, and then it was almost like I probably shared this story before. It was kind of like last minute. It wasn't last minute, but it was something we were talking about for a minute. And then we, um, our first two people we, we signed up was the Insect Brothers, which was Ama and Ime. So those was our two, our big scores. And then from there, we scored Kristen. Yes, we scored Molina. Chris, Kristen Molina. And then Willie Rouse came because Kristen Molina, they're, they're, they're great friends. And then Nigel, he was always on the radar, but Nigel was kind of already tied to another team that kind of fell through the cracks. And so Nigel became our, our fifth guy. And we sent them to uh, – what race? We Valley of the Sun. Valley of the Sun. We sent them all out there, and they did well as as young men. Um, they got housing. We paid for their race entry fees and whatnot. And they got on a podium. So they had a great time. We we did a really good job with these young men this year. No, nah, we – I mean – Number one, all of them are good good dudes. Yes. I, yes. I don't think there's one there's one uh rider in Methods to Winning Academy team that like you have to be concerned about. Yes. The Nessick brothers, I mean, just like I've learned from them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're they're mature beyond their, their years. Yes. Uh Nigel, his perseverance, he's dealing with a with the uh diabetes. With diabetes, you know, yet he can still hop on the podium. Makes Sharon chase him around at El Dorado Park. Yes, and he's just a soft-spoken, kind, yes, kind dude. But on the bike, he's an animal. Yes, yes. And then you have Christian, you know, living in—I oh, yeah. think he lives in Hollywood or somewhere where it's not conducive like to train. Or somewhere. Yeah, you know, but still, he loves the road race and, and just. He got he, he won states cat he, two this he, year. He's a state championship. Uh, he's a state champion for cat twos and just very polite, you know. When we first met him, they were calling calling us sir and whatnot. You know, it's like, no, you don't have to call us sir, but you got to appreciate that they have the wherewithal. They even have that respect for you, especially in today's age where there's not a lot of respect. And Willie know. did excellent in some road races. Oh, the, Willie crushed it. Yeah. I mean, we had re- literally a, a perfectly balanced team between crit racing and road racing. And even Nigel and the brothers, the Nessick brothers, yes. even they hopped out there and did some road racing and was very uh, – very successful. Um, so this photo I just threw up is from, I think, a 35-plus race. The Frenchie that got second place, he's yeah. an absolute diesel. Yeah. Um, he races these endurance, ultra-endurance races. When I say ultra, I mean like 24-hour Le Mans-type races um, and wins. So he's got he's got a lot of endurance. But uh, this was fun because uh, my teammate got on the podium with me. It came down to a sprint finish, and if anyone know me, if it come down to a sprint, you're going to have problems, even on a bad day. It's just like my muscle memory kicks in. Um, the but killer then, instinct. Yeah, the, the killer instinct. What they call it, the five-lap fever. Yeah. That always kicks in. And then um, we had Josh, 
on the podium yeah. with me, and then I think you cleaned it up for either like yeah. fourth or fifth. So another good day. I mean, we if if we talked about our results this year, we, we'll be here all night. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of good results. Um, this was this was a good event. Yes. If you don't know about the hunker, uh, you know Todd Brown. Yes, Todd Brown puts on this race called a hunker. It's a 100-kilometer race, which is basically, for you guys who don't know what a 100-kilometer is, it's 63 miles. And this event took place in, I want to say... Irvine Lake. Irvine Lake. Yeah. Um, the famous Como Street Ride goes through this loop, and we basically did four laps of it. And it was actually a... It was pretty challenging. It was pretty good. It was fun, though. I remember going into the last lap. I was like, Rashawn, I don't know if I'm going to make it over Cook's Corner this time. Man, let me <laughs> tell you what Saran did. <laughs> Saran get dropped going over the climb. Don't say drop, brother. You got dropped. <laughs> we all get dropped. Okay, I got I dropped. I waited on this dude. <laughs> I ride tempo. <laughs> I ride tempo for at least two or three miles. When we get close, this fool jump around me and leave me out to dry. So now I got to pull by myself for another mile or two just to get on to the back of the peloton. Hey, the five said, lap man, this fever ain't nothing. kicked in, brother. Five lap. <laughs> and then I get back I get back to the group, and then I get on the front, and then I lead, I lead the brothers out because I thought we was going to make a right into the park yeah. and then sprint, yeah. not knowing we had to go up, down, back around, and then up. Anyway, we still had a good ride. Um there were, I think, two people off the front, Correct. and then Ama and Ime uh, finished second and third uh, out of the out of the field kick. So, still a good day. I mean, another another good result. And then we had Kristen Molina. At, uh, he was uh, this was a shocker at um, San Dimas Stage Race, the road race, the too. the road race. He won the uh, Cat Two Road Race, and I was like, I was so happy for Kristen because he was having bad luck. Some bike issues, and it was just issue after issues. But that goes to show, like, your perseverance in life pays off, no matter your obstacles. Just keep pushing, keep grinding it out, and eventually, if you're doing the work honestly and you're putting in the time, your time is going to come. And that's what happened for Kristen at um, San Dimas. He took the win, and, um, hey, we, we're proud of that moment for him. We're just so happy for him as well because he was like – he wasn't. He was just having a rough time yeah. before this moment, but he's putting in the work, and he's like, "Man, I can't understand why I'm hitting these." I mean, look at that photo. Right. He's a whole two bike links in front of the whole field. Right. You right. know, and he's a skinny kid who likes to climb. So, I've done this race plenty of times. I don't care what category you are; it's a hard race. Yeah. I haven't done it. I haven't done a new course though, with the shorter, steeper yes. hill, whatever they call it. Yeah. I haven't done that Heckler course. Heckler Hill. Yet. Heckler Hill. Yeah. But I tell you, the, even the run up. You know, when you go past San Dimas Park by the golf course, that's yes. hard. Yeah. So that this photo that you see right now, that's that's well deserved right there, man. That was that was well deserved win. Um and then Mr. Nonchalant right here. Yeah. That's I'm a looks like Ontario. And I don't, why Tyler always celebrating for second <laughs> and third place? <laughs> I, I don't know. Tyler, put your hands down, right, man. Right, right. Tyler, like, I, I really won this race, but <laughs> I'm a, I'm a got the win, but I really drove to make this happen. Look, I was not even breathing, <laughs> man. And I'm going to point something out. I'm going to point something out. I want you all to look to the far left of this photo. There's a UCI pro in this photo from Jelly Belly. Um I forget his name, but it's a Mexican kid who's Lisa's absolutely maybe. legit. He won Sunset or either the Crit in the Redland Stage Race. That's Ulysses. Ulysses. He's a bad boy. And our man, Alma, smashed him. This was uh, this was big. And this, like, I don't know, man. Just kind of looking at this photo, it cracks me up that Tyler's yeah. <laughs> celebrating. But uh, I think uh, this photo, for me, kind of, it don't really sum up our year, but it kind of, it puts in perspective that our thoughts to put together this team was well worth it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It gave them an opportunity to showcase their talent, to release all that energy they want to release, and to have a uniform, a family. You know what I mean? And I, honestly, for early on, they were carrying us because we we're like, we we're kind of slow out the gate as older men. And our U23 guys came out like, hey, when y'all going to get a win, man? <laughs> like, man, we got to do something, Rasan. <laughs> so um, this leading into, um, I think, the CBR, I can't remember which, which race, maybe two or three. Um, my partner in crime, Rasan, led me off. He dumped me off in the final turn. 
and um, I came across, luckily I was able to close the deal, and um, some guy standing in the middle of the road, I think this is our partner, Ken, um, Diamondback Carbon. He got his pants up high. Yeah. yeah. You know you know he 50 plus. You, you would thought he won. <laughs> you thought you would thought he took some efforts in this race for me. <laughs> like, I told you I was going to do it for you, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but but Diamondback Carbon, he's an integral part into the organization. Um you know, he's behind the scenes, and he makes a lot of things happen for us. So when we win, he feel like he won because um, yeah, sure. he does a lot of heavy lifting for us. And um, honestly, some of the stuff we've been able to do, we couldn't do without him. So I agree 100%. We appreciate Ken sometimes. All right, anyway, off of Ken. <laughs> yeah. Back to this race. Um, I never forget leading you out for this race. I think you were getting impatient, or maybe I was getting impatient. I was yelling at our at our guys mm -hmm. to pick it up. Um we had Steve Salazar there. We had Max Hernandez. Oh, yeah. And I, I wanted to just string the thing out real quick because I knew at this point I'm really starting to get my fitness back, you know. Um, now we're we're in complete kits. I'm not in a Bahati kit. I'm in a Methods to Winning kit. We we should be rolling. I'm on my, I'm on my new bike. And, um, yeah, I wanted to just light it up. And I knew that with my closing speed was to run on my wheel, honestly – I don't think there's 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 not a combination in the country that can go faster than us together, and uh, we hopefully you know this next year we can prove that when nationals come to Colorado, but um, yeah it was it was a good lead out um, and it was nice to sit up coming out of the corner at like 60 kilometers an hour and knowing that Sharon would just have to pedal you know 10 pedal strokes at you know 1600 watts and, and win the race as and, you can and, see and as a closer not to cut Rasan off no but you cut me off though yeah sorry I'm, cool. a, I'm gonna let you finish I'm gonna <laughs> but give, give me a minute <laughs> but honestly if, if you have a guy in your corner who you know you can count on 110 percent it makes the racing so much easier and me and Rasan we race we don't talk necessarily it's just sometimes we just make contact and and it, he can make a face with his lips, and I'd be like, oh, man, okay, I need to do X, Y, and Z. And, and it's just a, like I'll give him a simple head nod, and he'll know what it means. So it's good when you connect it with your partner, and you can count on him, and he, I can count on him. I mean, he can count on me to deliver, so it's a good thing. Um, no, nah, that is that is that is true. I think when I've been on a lot of teams with a lot of good guys, and when you get to the point – where you don't have to say anything, that's when you know you're clicking on all cylinders. And I taught Sharon everything he knows, so we shouldn't have to say anything. <laughs> he won't give me any credit. Actually, he, every victory, he should pay me for how I used to coach him because he never paid me. I used to coach him for free. We're going to take that to the grave, my brother. <laughs> you being stubborn again, see? <laughs> um, I don't know if you remember, but I was emceeing this event. Yes. I, was, I was the MC with uh, – What's our guy? David uh, Wells. Dave, no, uh, Dave Worthington. Uh, Worthington. Yeah. I was emceeing with Worthington at CBR, and Ime is in the break. Did he bridge up to this break? He bridged up to the break like a madman. And, I, man, I never forget watching it. And I'm like, all right, he's good. I have to say, I didn't give him I didn't give him the respect that he was due. I was like, ah, with, with this group, he's good for, for third or fourth. Uh, the kid from Elevate KHS was top three tour Colorado in a stage, top three tour Utah in a stage. I think uh, he he got a lot of good victories. Chico, uh, you Redlands, you name it. So you know you looking at previous results, but our guy came through in the clutch. I never forget seeing him come around the corner and then sprinting like a madman and then kind of like. Giving the mischievous laugh, like "ha ha, I just yeah. won," you know. And, and the, I forget his name. I can't f remember the Elevate KHS guy's yeah, name, but either. he's like their closer. No, nah, he's fast. He's he, real fast. And he was peaking because he was going to a stage race after that. He would. This was the tune-up race for him. So he was running at. at he was full, on all cylinders. He was on all cylinders. Yeah, yeah. And our young twenty-three guys, like. Hold up, let me bend you over real quick and <laughs> <laughs> take this medicine. <laughs> and and earlier that day, you and I won first and third. Um, yeah. In in the thirty five plus. So just again, just having a lot of fun out there, um, just enjoying the race. You can see like Alma went out to the Belgian waffle ride. I think he did. He the, did the half ride. Yeah, which but is he still absolutely it. crazy. I think he won by like six minutes or some yeah. ridiculous amount. 
Yeah, and this is the photo of uh, Ime. Ime. Yeah, winning winning that race. You know, you can see the KHS guys like, yeah. oh my God, what just happened? And, and Ime's kind of turned around like, ha ha, <laughs> I outsmarted you and I was faster than you. So uh, definitely, a good, definitely a good race. And I would say the race of the year for me, the highlight of the year for me was uh, Dana Point Grand Prix. And I'll have to agree. Uh, one thing I like about, I love about our team, I don't want to say like, is that the bigger the event, the higher the pressure, the more guys, they step up. Like, you could just sense the energy and the focus level. Like, everybody know that it's like, okay, it's go time. We need to put the nail, the hammer to the nail and put the babies to bed. And each guy stepped up. Rasan did a ton of heavy lifting. I remember one move particularly, Rasan was in a break and he was outnumbered. I was like, crap, Rasan's – it's not a good situation. You could be Superman, but if you got three, four guys in a move – It was uh, Monster Media Monster. brought like – was it nine guys? Nine to ten. I don't. I can't remember. And, and, and they brought in some. Uh, they flew in guys. Yeah. From, from uh, out, uh, Oheiser. Oheiser. Some Mexican people. Yeah, uh, man. Some, some they Mexico. was really out to get us. Yeah. They they brought in like this was the mandatory race. So, <laughs> you know, we had our work cut out for us, and um, we we stepped up. Steve came in. Steve was rolling that day. Yeah. Steve I, came <laughs> out of nowhere and saved the day because I was getting to the point where I couldn't pull anymore. Yeah. I was getting tired. And as soon as I was, like, kind of shaking my head, like, man, I need some help, um, Stephen Kim hit the front. Yeah. You know, and then, like, it's just a thing. Like, when you see – when when you have a teammate that's struggling and he still get on the front and try, yes. it motivates everyone else. Yes, You know, like, yes. in this photo, you can see Salazar. Salazar has a full-time job as a fireman for L.A. County or L.A. City, I'm not exactly sure which one, but he's a fireman. You know, he's out fighting the California fires right now. Um, not a lot of training in his legs, but we've been racing together. Actually, you missed Steven in Kenosha, Wisconsin, when, when Roger Milliken took me there. You know, so even though he didn't have all the fitness in his legs, when you see someone like Stephen Kim who's just suffering give yes. his all, it makes everyone else kind of step their game up. So I, Stephen I came to the front. Um, Derek did a great uh, job as well. There's a picture he's of Derek. A, he's on the front. I can see the, the, the growl on his face. Derek is a full-time pilot. Um, he flies planes, get people from one destination to another. But he stepped up. Um, Derek's been on the team for many years, and he's just a – we got so many wonderful guys on the team who yeah. who are selfless. So this, this photo back to Steve. Right now, Monster has like – was it two guys? Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Two guys. There's only it's a two man break, and this is getting down to like five, four laps to go. And uh, if we don't chase, the race is over. We're going for third. Yeah. So Steve got the uh, Stephen Kim got the party going. Salazar hopped in, and then you can see Sharon in the far right hand corner, just kind of licking his chops. I I closed the deal, and the finish re the finishing results was this. You know. Um, and, and Eric, Eric, and Eric yeah. Anderson, Eric, and it was me. Um, who was lead? Coxworth, Theo, Eric Anderson. I was on Eric. I was like, oh man, this is Gucci. Yeah. So I mean, you got the three of the fastest guys in. Let's just stick to Southern California right now. Um, leading each other out. It's just it's it's gonna be a good day. So uh, Eric did a great job, and to finish it off, he sprinted to the line, which yes. got Methods to winning on the podium twice. Yes. Yes. Most definitely. Um. I mean, uh, some of the other things we did that I, I thought was cool was uh, the night at Rafa. Yes. Um, we talked – we had some of the old guys from Rock Racing show up. Uh, of course, Justin Williams was a part of that and basically just did, like, story time. Did Sergio um, Hernandez come to that? Sergio was there, Rudy Napolitano. Yes. I think that was it. So, Sergio, Rudy, Justin, and myself. Yeah. Yeah. You guys people. just share some stories about your years at Rock Racing. Right? Yeah, I mean, it was a it was a time when cycling was at an all time high. It was still in the Lance era. You had a guy who had buku money throwing it at the sport. Yes. Um, if you like it or not, you know, I, I, I looking back, I thought it was good for the sport. I wish it the, brought a lot of flair. I would say and was, attention. Yeah, we needed when y'all rolled in, it's like man. This how it, that's how sports should be. Like, right, have some swagger. You want people to show up to watch you. Right, right. But, like, man, what are they going to wear today? Exactly. We used to change kits like every other <laughs> race, man. It was ridiculous, yeah, we used man. to change kits every other race. <laughs> um, so kind of closing the year, we went to Barry Wolf, a race that was absent last year due to some constructions and uh, construction or whatnot. But this was 
big for us because it's the state championships. Correct. Um, to say that you're you're the best in the state is a huge deal. And I mean, he surrounds on the podium with two heavy hitters. These guys don't play, you know. He rode away from us at Santa Barbara. Yep. Um, our, our Scott Lundy. Yeah. Yeah. Our first lap road race of the lap year. one. It's like, yeah. oh, we'll bring him back. Never saw Never him. Never saw him again. So um, I recall this race. I showed up in my state championship skin suit or signed a veteran. You know you can't race in that, right? I was like, what you mean? I'm the champ. No, nah, you can't race in the championship in your state ch championship kit, rookie. So I, I of course. I being, know the rules and the consequences. Yes. Being the wise guy, I always bring a, a backup kit. So I, I changed kits. I remember this race. The Scott Lundy, um, Aaron Bolson, I don't want to screw up his last name, and Marco Ochoa, they went up the road, and I was like, man, those are three strong guys. They can they can stick it if if we don't put some action to, to the race. So we end up doing some work. Rasan did a ton of work. I remember Derek went to the front. Um, I think Aaron was there. I can't recall, but I know Derek was there. Um, I had the bridge across to those three guys, and then another guy came across who was Jason Madoff. Oh yeah, he's a strong guy, and um, Jason, good dude too. Good, great guy, track world champ on in pursuit. So, um, I was able to luckily enough to close out that day and and win the state title. So, um, that was a great day for the team again. Yeah, and and it's in the memory of Barry Wolf. If you're not familiar with the Simi Valley Ride or that area, which unfortunately is on fire right now. Uh, Barry started the Simi Ride and has been going on for decades, and now his his son actually is part of the organization of uh, running the semi-ride and kind of keeping the name alive. He puts on the race over in Westlake. So good race. It's a race I look forward to every year. It used to be around Warner Center right off of yes. Topanga, uh, yeah. which was a good race. It was a it was basically a race to the last corner yeah. with an <laughs> island in the middle. And if and you went too fast, coming on the other side. Yeah, if you went too fast, you're on the other side of the street. So you had to time it perfectly. And kind of summing up the year, um, we had Max – uh, win a race. Yes, uh, we're, he, we're spreading the wealth around. Was that out in uh? That was Ladera Ranch. Ladera, he won Ladera Ranch. Dang, That's the thirty-five father. plus Ladera Ranch I didn't race. Even know that I, he I, was, I was in out a of break. Town. Uh, Max, matter of fact, bridged up to this break, and he won this race. Max yeah. is a killer. That, that was a big race. Max for is a killer. And then yeah. later that day, Justin wins the pro race with Alma bringing in second. So a methods to winning rider and a methods to winning principal on the podium. Um, I'll tell you. Another highlight for me was um, Alma going to the Boise Twilight yes. and winning that race in phenomenal fashion. He won that solo. Yeah, I remember his front. dad telling me he bridged to the break, dropped the break, and then won solo. So that was huge, man, to go. And that's at altitude. Boise is at, like, I think 2,500 feet. And yeah. For, I know for me, everyone is different, but for me to go from sea level to uh, altitude, I don't respond respond too well physically. I need a few days to get alcumated, acumated. Uh, then we took our talents over to Shy Intelligentsia town. Cup. Shot yeah. town, my town. Um, the reason I like doing this race, one, I have a really good friend who lives there. Two, uh, one of the guys who was the promoter gave me my second pro contract, Tom Schuler, and another promoter helped me, he's an attorney, helped me get my foundation off the ground. So, I'm not saying that like I owe them anything, but we have a great relationship and they've supported me, so I like to support them. And honestly, it's just a good event. It's the cycle of life. Somebody help you out, you always should go back and help them out. Was this out. your first time? That was my first time there. Look, he he went in winning. Look at him. I, I, matter of fact, I flew in town st straight Wednesday to the night. race. Yeah, yeah. We had Jimmy Johns on the ground. <laughs> we broke the sandwiches up. Remember that? Me, you, and Sally. Was that the day I crashed? No, nah, you crashed the second day. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, and so uh, we was like, we got to get a win, man. We've been getting second and third. Second, second, and second. So we fought, we won. The, actually, I think this was the biggest race, right? Oh, For, yeah. That's uh, Elmhurst. Elmhurst is cool. It goes around a, a college in Elmhurst, which is right on the um, outside of the skirts of uh, Chicago. They do a great job putting on the event. The pro race is at night, yeah. and those boys fly. I've done it three or four times. I've got on the podium a couple times at Elmhurst. Um, this was my first time doing the Masters, actually. And, yeah, Elmhurst know how to put on a put on a party. Just to the right is a, a beer garden, which is in front of, like, like a city hall of some sort. Um, it's just great. The, the city come out. 
you remember we were hanging out with the locals? Oh yeah, we went to somebody's house. We, we went to somebody's house. They invited us. <laughs> we didn't us. even know them. No, nah, well after the after Saran won, we do our little cool down lap, and they want to know who won. They're like, he won. Oh, come party with us. So yeah. we get changed and we go hang out on the front lawn. They got you know catered food. They got beer. Uh, the locals want to know where you're from. You tell them from you from L.A. They they jaws drop you like, and you come all the way to Elmhurst to race Well, people bike. came from the Germans. Some Germans oh, were yeah. there. The guy in the photo the guy was in second. He was from, from Australia. Yes. And the guy in third, Emil Abraham. Abraham is from uh, Trinidad. Yeah, I'll put up a photo right now. It's Trinidad. Yeah. So that's Emil in the red, and, and both of these dudes, second and yeah. third, uh, solid guys. I've known Emil for a long time. I just met. The Australian guy, and in even though he was super fast and a, a fierce competitor, he was a really nice guy too. Very chill. Yeah, it's just like he'll race you to the death of it, but then when it's all said and done, shake, shake hands. Head. And, and it was so funny every day, without even knowing them and without ex- exchanging numbers, we would end up in the right. Same place. We would set our tents we up. We set our tents up in the <laughs> same place. That sounds like oh, that's easy to do. But sometimes you enter off of different roads and yeah. you got one way streets and they directing you. And then we always set up on, on one road. Even this race, we set up like right next right, to each other. Right, like, right man, this the, this is like a number one guy we're going to be going up against. And we keep setting up right next to each yep, other. Yep. And then um, I was having a rough patch. I crashed, uh, messed up my brand new giant propel. And yeah. uh, I remember this day. <laughs> I was getting sore and sore. So this day was the last day, and it was right around uh, Folsom Market, which is right by the United Center in, in downtown Chicago. It's also where they roast Intelligentsia Coffee. Ah. So it was, the, it was the last race, and big dude to my left, I call him Rigo Jr. He rides just like Rigo. Oh, Carlos. Carlos. Carlos, Carlos is from full, Brazil. full gas. Yeah. And then you got Ben Sharp, who's a proven pro from back in the day. I used to race against him when I was a pro. So like, now I'm off the front with Carlos. Actually, let me go wait. Back. Wait, let's rewind. Let me, yeah, 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 let's, yeah, yeah. let's rewind this I'll story. Let you tell the story. So we're in the race, and so I'm like, Rashawn, how you feel? Oh man, I'm not good today, Sharon. He's shaking his head. No, like, but honestly, I wasn't good. My body was sore. My scabs are starting to heal. My 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 hips are out of place. I can, I can barely pedal the bike. Yeah, so so I go back. I'm like, okay, I'm got to shake. It, I like racing is mental to me, so I'm like, okay, shoot, I got to step up. My boy's a little beat up right now, and so I'm sitting back in the pack. I'm monitoring the field. I'm like, okay, I'm plotting. And next thing I know, I go up to Salazar. I'm like, hey, where's her son, Eric? I know, I, I know, I ask Eric Anderson, where's her son? Rasan's up the road. No, what? Rasan's not feeling too good. He can't be up the road. Sure enough. Rasan's up the road in the break. I'm like, man, this guy just told me he was battered, bruised. I don't know if I'm going to finish the race, and he up the road. So, But it worked out for us. He made the break. Um, the odds were in our favor Definitely. instantly. So um, Rasan could share on the, on, the, on the move that he ended up making. Yeah, for sure. Like, I just saw him going, and I didn't know. Um, and if, if, if you want to see the video, I actually have a video on my YouTube page of the race. You, you see a guy like Carlos go, even though I'm in bad shape, you got to follow. Because I figured in my head, if I follow, someone else will follow, and it will shut this guy down. But no one else followed, and it was kind of perfect timing on my behalf. And we were off the front, and I just told him. I was like, Carlos, look, I'm not feeling that well. I'll do what I can do. And the longer the race went on, the better I got. And believe it or not, it was – it was uh, it was the it was the first day that I drank two mu- uh, muscle monsters. Okay. I drank two. Yeah. Yeah. I was I usually drink one and then have something in my bottle like the hydro or something like that. But this particular one, I drank two, um, and I just I got better and better as the race went on. And then I saw Ben Sharp coming across. Yeah. Right. I didn't know it was Ben though. I thought yeah. it was a uh, uh, Strelecki. Oh yeah, yeah. Strelecki is an ex BMX pro world champ actually. World champ, super fast. And I told Carlos, I said, Carlos, if Strelecki come across, that means you're getting third. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can, so you could go from second to third, <laughs> how, how you want to do it. So when I told him that, Carlos put it in the overdrive. And hey, Carlos was rolling the whole series, Carlo, man. He won, he won the day before. Yes, he? yes. The hard race. Uh, yeah, that was that race, man. I was like in the box. I got I dropped. Was, yes. I was embarrassed. I got yeah. dropped in the Masters race. I was, I was like, like, man, I ain't got dropped in the race and <laughs> – I dropped out of a race. My body was just not into it, man. Uh, I forget the name of that. 
That was a hard race, though. That's a good uh, – Yeah. God, I can say it right now, but that's where uh, – actually, one of the founders – that created uh, ETAP lives there. Okay. Ben Raby. Yeah, yeah, nice neighborhood yeah, too. Very nice. Is that around a lake? Uh, a little pond or something? Yeah, it's a little. It's, yeah. it's a park. Uh, it's actually a course that Christian Vanderbilt's dad created okay. for some race back in the day. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But that was that was a good event, and uh, Sharon was the only one to hold on. <laughs> Man, Every, I'm looking everybody up. in the team got dropped. <laughs> I look at all the sidelines like hell. I wanted to pull out. <laughs> they already beat me to it. So, yeah, but that was a great event. Carlos actually broke away, and he he won solo that day. He won day. solo. I was yeah. watching. I was watching Embarrassed. <laughs> he kicked our butts that day. I can't so. believe I dropped out. Man. Uh, Lake Ellen. Lake Ellen. That's Glenn the name Ellen. of it. Yep. Glenn yeah. Ellen course. That's that's a good course. I and, mean, and Carlos he, brought his wife that race. Whenever somebody bring their wife to the race, you he better. He won another one solo. Oh, he won the one with the steep hill. Yes, yes. That, that was, was uh, my first day there. Oh, that was a hard one. Yeah. That was a hard one. That was a. Uh, West Dundee. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's West right. Dundee was tough. Yeah. So. Uh, anyway, yeah, it was good. I mean, that was a good showing. When you spend money like that to travel outside of your state, you know, it's you want to at least have some results so so the so the trip is not a bust. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Bike fees, you got to eat, you got to put <laughs> gas in the car, you got to rent a car. Luckily, we had uh, free housing. But, um, yeah, you know, so for next year. We it's a great to event to support. It if is. You, if you it don't is. leave the state, you should come down to Chicago, do Intelligentsia. Nine days. What, nine days? Nine and days. All the races are pretty much 45 minutes, 30 minutes away. You can get to them, um, race against some different guys, um, and different um, different competition. It just broadens your horizon and makes you a better racer. It sharpens your edge. So. so. No, nah, we talked. We yeah. talked about results. I mean, if you go to our website, I don't know if it's updated, but we 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 got a bunch. We got a bunch of results. Um, no, we did um, forty races. I got it in my head. We did fifty-four podiums and twenty-four win, twenty-three wins. So off of forty, that's like a forty fifty percent. It's not bad. Kill man. rate. <laughs> which is which is an um normal in cycling. No, nah, that's it's not It's tough bad. to get wins. It's tough to get on podiums, especially with the competition <laughs> we race against. So hell, we had a spectacular year for our opening year. I I agree, man. Um, you know, and like you said, I always tell people winning is not easy. So no matter the level of races that you win, cat five, cat four, whatever, it's always tough to win. You know what I mean? I agree. Um. So um, we want to touch – what else? Rashawn, you did Ram this year, correct? Yep, sure did. Race across America. Yeah, I don't know why why people want to race across race America. Race across America. Uh, what did you do, a four-man, five-man team? I did a four-man team with Alex Isley, uh, Mark – I'm not going to butcher his last name – and my boy Alex out in uh, – he he's over there by Fashion Island. Okay. Good team. Yeah. Real yeah. good team. Um, And I, I found – I found out about Ram through Alex, who I had a relationship with from previous years, mm -hmm. uh, from doing some work with him at through the fitness industry. And uh, he asked. I said, yeah. And six months later, <laughs> well, I'm in a meeting and, and, and committed. Um, and honestly, I no regrets there. Absolutely none. How many days was that? We did almost seven days. Nonstop. Nonstop. You never stop moving. Even though two people got a hotel. Mm. For about eight hours. <laughs> That's baller. So, baller. So, so wait. You start in San Diego and you end Oceanside. In, well, Oceanside, and you end in in uh, Annapolis. Annapolis, Maryland, basically dock to dock. So we left Oceanside sometime in June. I think it was the sixteenth. You th you would think I would know this stuff, and we got to Annapolis, Maryland. About six and a half days later. No matter if rain and sun, oh, heat, Oh, man, from wind. by the time we hit Ohio, it yeah. was rain all the way to the finish. So you had Ohio, you had Indiana, you had Illinois, you had uh, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, back into West Virginia, and then into Maryland. It rained the entire time. So that, that takes a different type of mindset. Uh, um I have no motivation. <laughs> I'm out. I'll never do it again. <laughs> to ride across America in the dark. I mean, it's, 
I don't know. It's just a t- different mentality. Like <laughs> to ride that many miles in X amount of days. So um, yeah, it was definitely a trip, man. But um, it, it it's like one of those bucket list items. You know what I mean? Like you do it, you get it done with, and after that. You, you can move on, and it, it's something that you would never forget, man. And honestly, the the crew, well, I think we had 16 people that helped us crew the event. Couldn't have did it without them. Oh, no. Nah. And, and, and it's people that I can sit down with and have a glass of wine or invite them to my house. Yeah. Like, nobody nobody was so bad that you wouldn't want to be around them. You know yeah. what I mean? So. And we, it's for a good cause, right? Yeah, we did it for three organizations, which was, um, oh, man. Jesse Reese Foundation, so that's uh, pediatric cancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, the Bahati Foundation, we work with inner city youth. Um, we also did it for Augie's Quest, which fights ALS. Okay. So, yeah, we did it. F- we, we raised quite a, fit of, uh, uh, quite a bit of dollars for the efforts. Um, if I had the money, I'll just write a check for 20000 and give it <laughs> to the organizations <laughs> instead of ride across the country again. Um, but, uh, sh- I mean, outside of that, man, we had. Just summing it up, man. We had Ime to move on from our yes. organization. He got promoted. He got pro picked contract. up by Avello. Yep, with Mike Creed. Yes, yep. yes. Um, if you don't know about Mike Creed, check out the latest Cycling News. There's an article on him right now about some of the things he's uh, he's facing and half face and, and where he is right now. He's doing a great job. We, we've been teammates plenty of times. And, um, I mean, that's that's our couple years kind of in, in an hour but there's a lot more to that, and we want to offer yeah. you guys a lot more to come. So, And we have more coming for 2019. We, oh, yeah. We, we're going to um, create some new things coming up, so be on the lookout for that soon. We'll make some announcements yep. regarding that. So, uh, um, Don't forget about our sponsors, though, yes, that got, helped us get here. We got mus, mus, Muscle Monster, I'm sorry, LEL, Seth Davison, Velo Pasadena. Um, of course, our accomplishment with RAM, state championship, na- national championship, Ime Nissik going pro. Um, the list goes on. So we have some some great things in store. We're just going to continue to try to grow and grow and grow and, and see where we could take it. Um, we're not we're not going to set a, a end goal necessarily. We, we want to keep growing as as the industry and the cycling community allows us to grow. And we're going to continue to bring people together, um, bring more smiles, bring more peace. Um, and just give back. Really, really, our organization is around giving back, getting more women on a bike, um, getting more young men on a bike, giving back to some unprivileged people in the community, and just just wherever we can help. You know, it's about helping and leaving a legacy. Um, if you're just out here just taking and taking and taking and not giving back, and if you have accomplished, what are you really doing? You should really sit back and think about that. Um, we lost a beautiful soul um, a few months ago, Ifyak Nasek. Um, Ifyak was wonderful. He he played an instrumental role in our organization behind the scenes. Um, I know he imparted some good things in my life, for Sam's Absolutely. life. And, of course, his, his beautiful boys that he has, his wonderful wife, Angie. I still keep in contact with her. She's still active she's riding she's yep. hiking um she's a teacher so she's giving back to the community although you may not know it but hell heck she's teaching our future that's right um so the list goes on we just trying to partner with people who want to make a difference monsters trying to make a difference you see they're making a big push in the cycling community they're partnering with us to help us trying to push some of our initiatives and, and where we're trying to go and um Heck, Rasan, I'll let you finish it off. No, I think you pretty much summed it up, man. It's been a it's been a hell of a ride the last two and a half years. Um, there's a lot of people we can thank. You know, uh, we got a lot of supporters. People like Bob Moser. Yes. People like Michelle Landis. Yeah, uh, she's constant. People like Travis. Yes. You know, uh, we got a lot of support, man. I, and I'm sorry if I didn't name, if I didn't drop your name. You know who you are. You're you're huge supporters of the foundation, of uh, Methods to Winning, of myself. Uh, I know for sure I wouldn't be where I am today sitting if I didn't have the support of people like the Major uh, Major Motion Cycling Club. Yes. Uh, I mean, it's, the list goes on. You know what I mean? So uh, if I have the opportunity, I would just say thanks. And um, we want to we want to dedicate this podcast to Ifiak. Um Like Sharon said, he was 
we went to his memorial service and a lot of every there was a there was 50 people who said something but they all said the same thing <laughs> seriously there could have been one person that talked about him and would have summed up everyone else right uh, that just goes to show you he he was he, he was, was who he was yeah right yeah and uh yeah it was definitely a hard blow to, to uh know that he tragically immaturely lost his life uh while riding his bike with his wife uh one of the toughest parts was actually hearing his wife speak about her husband uh, and also seeing the boys speak about their father uh, but he he instilled a lot of uh, good things in his boys and I'm sure he's proud right now so they're going to bounce back and they will be strong and like, like Sharon said his wife is out riding and mountain biking and doing exactly what she would do if he was here on this earth so this podcast is dedicated to Ifyak well, what, what, what? He said he's like Simba. He had that voice. Yeah. Hello, Rasal. You know, <laughs> he had that voice when he walked in the room and he said something. You, you had his attention. Uh, he got your attention. So uh, we definitely miss him. Uh, we wish him the best to the Ethiopian family. And uh, please pay attention to Methods to Winning in 2019. Ooh, ooh. Got a lot of things coming on. The last line of business, I want to say, December 8th, is Bike Tree Giveaway, sponsored by Giant Bicycles ride on bicycles co-op in Lamert Park Methods to Winning uh, Pinuo Bike Shop out of Inglewood and of course the Bahati Foundation is hosting this event it will be on December 8th if you can come please come it's going to be a life changing moment and uh, we would love to have everyone there we're going to give out gifts because we're doing a toy drive every uh, Saturday of this month so we have two, two toy drives left um, if you don't know about them just visit our Facebook page and you can learn more about them um, also one of our huge supporters in the toy drive and the, um, the bike and tree giveaway is the LAPD we, 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 we've come a long way when you got Los Angeles Police Department partner with you had a meeting with them today everything went fantastic they're excited about the event so again december 8th come on out support even if you're not donating anything just come just come see come see the impact that giving a bike and a and a, and a holiday tree to a family will have for those that are in need so once again i'm rasan bahati fear the fro podcast and i'm Here sharon smith sharon smith we bring it live baby bring it live one take we All can't right. do it over Thanks for thanks for listening and uh, tune in again. Peace. God bless.